start to notice sometimes trends that students have. And I started after a while to notice many students saying that they had enjoyed the Twilight books. And I thought, well, I don't know, what, what is this? And I noticed that a lot of the students who were writing that were very thoughtful students, uh, very um, introspective students, students whose writing showed that they were good critical thinkers. I thought, well, maybe there's something to this. So I read the series and was enchanted, uh, just like most of my students. But I also saw that as a really wonderful opportunity to take literature that people already love, take literature that people already like, and use it as a way to become more comfortable with the wider world of literature and with some of the things that, that happen in literature in general. You know, for example, if you can understand narrative shift uh, that you have in Breaking Dawn where we shift speakers, then maybe it wouldn't be so scary when you read The Sound and the Fury, and William Faulkner does it four times. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about, um, about the literary frameworks that Meyer uses. And she's very open about the fact that she does use frameworks, that she has skeletons from other texts that she uses. But sometimes people get a little worried about things like that. I think that indicates being an original or copying from another work. And really, that's not the case at all. Um, C.S. Lewis has a wonderful phrase I love, which is called good unoriginality. Uh, bad unoriginality is when you think, oh, I've heard this joke before, ah. or you know, when you're watching this movie and you think, oh, I know where this is going, what's on the other channel? Uh, that's bad unoriginality. You know, it just makes you go, Ugh. good unoriginality doesn't make you groan, it makes you go, ooh. Good unoriginality is, ooh, I know where this is going. Ooh, I know this story, I've been here before, how wonderful. And that is really what Meyer is using, is good unoriginality. She's taking some places we've been before and taking us in a little bit different direction, maybe, than we, we thought. And what's wonderful about good unoriginality is it can also help us enjoy the, the previous text. As we get into uh, Breaking Dawn, we also have our, our villains who are, you know, the, uh, the mean old people who live in a castle, right? You know, so you can kind of see that from being something we see in fairy tales. We have castles. Uh, obviously, we have a cottage. Uh, which is a fairy tale thing, um, and obviously you know, Edward climbs in her window, um, which you just imagine what you know. <laughs> she says, you know, it's a good thing that Char that Charlie can't uh, you know read your mind. You know, he'd be in big trouble. But uh, she, uh, you know, he comes in the window. So what does that make us think of automatically? And she does have long hair, not that long, but <laughs> Rapunzel, right? Yes, especially when he keeps coming to see her even after he's been told not to come back. Uh, and so there's that sense there that you know that the coming in the window which is definitely a fairy tale thing. So the sort of the spiritual dimension of the relationship, because we know that in the Bible we, we do see the relationship of Christ and the church as, as a marriage, uh, as, a, as the man-woman relationship. And we can see, and that is not to say that Edward is Jesus, uh, please. <laughs> please no, we're not saying that. Uh, but, but we are saying that uh, because, because Edward is very fallible and knows he's fallible. And he, he is just as, as flawed and complex as any. He's, 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 uh, let's not say he's only human. No, he's not. As he says, you know, he may not be human, but he is a man. Uh, he, is, he is a person with, with flaws. But that relationship uh, very much, you know, connects in that way. It makes that parallel very beautifully. Um, which is, is why that the whole temptation motif is so interesting. Um, you know, is, is this this mean that we're being tempted to do something, you know, holding out the apple, you know, is it a woohoo, you know, uh, kind of thing. What, what, to what uh, degree does temptation work here? In what ways is this a story about good and evil? Is it a story about knowledge versus innocence and, and which is better uh, in, in different ways? And so definitely in that regard, we can certainly see that happening. that idea of um, th that we do, we're, we need something. Uh, as human beings, we're always searching uh, for those kinds of elements, uh, for those kinds of issues. And in many ways, the series you know, does those things that, that we're looking for that we maybe aren't seeing. Whether you're reading Gulliver's Travels or you know, wh whatever you're reading, very often it takes you to some place different than where you are. Uh, whether that is a physical place on the surface level of the story or whether it is some place different internally where you're going there uh, someplace inside yourself in a different way. So certainly the taking you somewhere else is an appeal. Uh, there is something wonderful about this world that we go into. It's a world that's very compelling. It's very interesting. 
Uh, we find it very likable. We find that the, you know, we like a lot of these people and we want things to turn out well for them. And so we're happy when they do. Um, and so we, we kind of have that element of wanting to go there as well. And yet at the same time, there's a real level of relatability uh, there. Um, because a lot of these characters do the same stupid things we do. Okay. Um, I, I know I, I saw a, a button or something the other day that said, I was clumsy before Bella Swan made it cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah there, there are a lot of 17-year-old uh, girls who, just like poor Bella, can trip over flat surfaces and uh, who think of themselves as very ordinary and plain. And yet, you know, she is a really interesting character. She doesn't wear makeup. She's very much herself, um, even though she has a lot of issues with self-worth and with who she is. Um, she is still very much a complete person, and I think that's really interesting that she is this, this kind of interesting person and very aware of her own flaws and her own shortcomings uh, in that way as well. So she's very relatable. I think that's part of, part of the appeal, too, is that even though we have this extraordinary world, and this is something we see in fairy tales and in myth, um, in any of those kinds of stories, any of those things that appeal to us, whether it's the Lord of the Rings or any of those kinds of things, um, we often have these huge, epic, sweeping things going on, but we usually see them from the point of view of somebody who's a lot like us. Mm -hmm.